Service of song for late Dickens Bukola, Bola Joko Lafisa. We'll start with our choruses and uh, the event has started. Please, uh, can we all please be seated apart from the ushers so that uh, it looks more organized? Thank you.
have revived Pastor Sheo Mobalaji, a pastor for Zone 10, Lagos Presbytery Faith. Let's put our hands together for him. of the Lord we will sing we will sing of the mercy of the Lord oh, we will sing of the mercies of the Lord with our mouth with our mouth will I make the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the bright and morning stars, the race of Sharon, we bless your name. The resurrection and the life, we honor you. The giver of life, we glorify your name. We thank you because you are a sovereign God. You do as it pleases you. When you do a thing, no one can question you. No one can query your authority. Because we are the one that know where the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. It is written that your loving kindness is better than life. And our lips shall praise you. Father, Lord, King of glory, we thank you. Father, we thank you for making it possible for us to be here this very evening, to be your daughter, Pekines, Okola, Ola Gupu, Ola Christian Fairway. We want to thank you for your life well spent. We want to thank you for the family. We want to bless your name, O oh God, for sustaining them at a time like this. We want to thank you for encouraging them. We want to thank you, oh God, for renewing their strength, for making your joy to be their strength. We bless your name for this, oh God. Please accept our attention in Jesus' name. Father, we commit this program into your hands, oh God. We ask, Lord, that you please take preeminence in the name of Jesus. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, from the beginning to the end, please be glorified. Magnify yourself in our midst today. Do that which you only can do in our midst today. And at the end of it all, O oh God, we promise to return our glory unto you. Thank you, faithful Redeemer. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Next, we'll be taking our first Bible reading. We'll be taking from the book of Isaiah 41, verse 10 to 20. And to take this reading will be Mrs. Miss Ore Olua Olafison. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. 
My name is Orolua Olafusun. I would like to thank you all for coming here today to honor my mom. I'll be taking. Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and shall make the hills as shaft. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and thy tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the Lord God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places, and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water, and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitter tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, and the pine, the box tree together, that they may see and know, and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord had done this, and the Holy One of Israel had created it. Thank you, and God bless you. to help us to take the heat. Praise the Lord. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here to appreciate God for the very good life spent by our darling, Deaconess Nicola Olafison. God bless her. We start this service by singing the hymn, When Peace Like a River, and Death Can Bring. Sing it, please.
Bible reading, the second Bible reading is going to be taken by Oluwadin Femi Olakison. My name is Olakison and I will be reading from 1 Corinthians 15 verse 40 to 58. And it says, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, 
and this mortal must put on immortality. And when this incorruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have, shall have put on immortality, then we shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Next, we'll be taking two hymns. Uh, the first one is Hallelujah. Second one, Jesus Lives. And to lead us in this hymn is Assistant Pastor Bola Koko, the wife of the heir pastor of AR25. Praise the Lord. Our next hymn is taken from our Redeem in Love book in 162. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The strive is on. So let us rise up and we will sing the singers. the role is called up yonder. None of us will be missing in Jesus' name. The next aim, aim 
1-7-0. Jesus lives, thy terrors now. Jesus lives, thy terrors now. Shall we go? One, two, three, go. Let's go, please. Jesus lives, thy terrors now. And all death go now upon us. Jesus lives by this we know. Thou, O grave, canst not entrail us. Jesus. I'd like to appreciate everyone for chipping in. Um, uh, choir. They are stuck in traffic, and that's why we are having some challenges this evening. But we are doing very well, and uh, it will not stop us from continuing. Next, we'll take our third Bible reading, and that will be taken by the air pastor, Pastor Folisho Koku. The third Bible reading is taken from John 14, verses 1 to 7. John 14, 1 to 7. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house 
are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, The truth and the life, no man cometh but by me. If he have known my father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he live. And whatsoever, sorry, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Romans 14, 8 and 9. And whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. First Thessalonians 5, 1 to 11. 1 to 11. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh unto them, as travel upon a woman with child, they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, Comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And finally, we take 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others 
which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the Lord, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy words. It's my pleasure and privilege to invite our Father in the Lord, Pastor Victor Agumbiade, the pastor in charge of Lagos Province 23 of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, to please take the exhortation. Thank you, sir. Good evening, beloved brethren. I want to welcome you into this special occasion. Please sing with me. On the last day, on the last day, only true believers will be raptured. On the last day, on the last day, only through believers will be right. One more time. On the last day, on the last day, only true believers will be raptured. My soul that magnify the Lord and my spirit praise his name for death could not hold him captive even in the grave Jesus is Lord even in the grave Jesus is let us pray our Father who art in heaven, we return praise, glory, honor, and majesty unto your holy name. Thank you because you are the almighty God, the all-knowing, the all-seeing, the everlasting, the unquestionable God. We return praise, glory, and majesty unto your holy name. Please be exalted forever and ever. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the reasons for which we are gathered tonight. We thank you for bringing today to come to pass. Lord, we pray as we go into the realm of the world that you will speak to us. You will comfort us. You will help us tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. 
Once again, I say good evening to everyone. Thank you for coming here tonight to celebrate with us our dear, darling sister, Bukola. We thank God for her life. We thank God for what God released to her. The potentials, the gifts, and the time that God gave, released, allowed her to stay on Mother Earth. Beloved brethren, by the special grace of God, if God allows us to see her, where she's looking down at us right now, then you will know she's in a better place. She's in a better place, and I'm confident that she finished well, and so she's in more, a better place than what we have. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse number 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse number 2. Is it on the screen? Not yet. Okay. The Bible says, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to heart. Tonight, we are in this mood because we have parted body with Sister Bukola. And that is the scripture I've just read now that says it is better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting so that we will learn a lesson. We will want to be where she is. Not that we want her to return, but that the matter is not about her now, it's about me and you. I want to be where she is. If she's praying there, she'll be praying for all of us and the husband and say, I pray this man will come and meet me here. I pray my children will come and meet me here. Our own prayers should be, Lord, let me finish well. When my own time shall come, let me finish well. I'm going to talk in a few minutes on a message I titled what happens when the door when the when what what happens behind the closed door what happens behind the closed door that's what I want to talk about very briefly by the special grace of God is it that signifies the end of the existence of man on earth the way God has designed it he has designed man in such a way that man does not live forever and ever. God only is the immortal God. We are mortal beings. He designed it that we will come at one point into the earth, live our lives with whatever potentials we bring in from heaven, impact lives in such a way that heaven and earth will know that we've been through life. And at our own time, we get out of life. Job 14 verse 1 says, A man that is born of woman is of few days. Nobody has come to this mother up to stay forever and ever. The only mystery here is that nobody knows when. We don't know when. But the important thing to me and you <laughs> is that we must finish well. We must finish well. We must not end our race at the wrong destination. What happens to me and you when the time is up? In Job chapter 14, that I read, and the fifth verse there, 14 and verse 5, Job says, Seeing his days are determined, 
saying that the days that a man will live on earth are determined by God. From the moment we left heaven to come as a baby, God has destined our path, our life, our path, a number of years are determined. That scripture says in verse 5, it says, The number of his months are with you, O God. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. God has set a boundary, a time that me and you will live, live this mother earth. Man is not just destined to die. There is a predetermined time by God for man to go. Whether you know the date, the time, whether you are ready or not, does not change anything. When the time is up, you must go. When the time is up, you are going. Irrespective of, of whatever wealth you carry, irrespective of whatsoever power you have, in the scriptures, there's a story of the man called Elisha. Elisha served Elijah. Elijah was a man of tremendous power of God. And when Elijah was going, he asked Elijah, what do you want? Elisha said, I want a double portion of your anointing. In other words, I want to do greater than what you have done, probably two times of what you have done. Long story cut short, he got the power. Elisha impacted his own time, his own generation. He was a man that was full of power and anointing. But he said in 2 Kings chapter 13 and verse 14, 2 Kings 13 and verse 14, the Bible says, Now Elisha was fallen sick of the sickness whereof he died. Elisha, as powerful as he was, when death came, when his time was up, the time that was predetermined by God, he gave it up. In 2 Kings chapter 13 and verse 21, just 20, verse 21, something happened about that Elisha. He's been buried. Then one day they mistakenly threw one dead body into his same sepulchre, his graveyard. And the dead body touched the bones of a dead man, Elisha. And the man came back to life. What that says to you that was that Elisha went to the grave with so much power, enough power to defeat death. But he had to bow to death when his time was up. Our times are predetermined. We don't know when the times are. Some people are destined to live 150 years, 120 years, 80 years. But I say to you, Job says, every day of my appointed time will I live till my change comes. Sister Bukola lived her life. She passed to glory when God opened the gates for her to come. And I have great testimonies concerning our life. What I had, what I've read, what I'm going to share again with you tonight. One great mystery about this same God. This same God that promised eternal, promised long life for righteous people. There's a great mystery about him. He's the one that says, I will be with you, you will live very long. But he says to us again in Isaiah 75 and verse 1. Isaiah 57 and verse number 1. He says, sometimes when a righteous person dies young, you start to wonder what is happening. You don't ever imagine that God could have taken this righteous person out of the way because of the evil in front. Isaiah 57 and verse 1. You see it there? It says, you, you wonder, you are sad, you are not happy when somebody leaves, particularly a child of God, particularly somebody holy and righteous, somebody you never think can go. You don't ever imagine that God could have taken this person away 
to avoid the evil that is coming. Oh, the almighty God. Excuse me, I have a question for you. You are the almighty God. Why didn't you take that evil away and let this righteous person live? He knows why. He knows why he prefers to gain the righteous person to himself where he is. Whichever way it is, all men are destined to live whether we are old or young. The door will be shut to this present world and opened to a new one. So my question tonight is when the door is shut, what happens? When we say bye-bye, when it's time to go, and we wave to the world, bye-bye. And we opened a door to pass into eternal life. And we shut the door. Those of us here don't know what is happening there. That is the question tonight. What happened? What is happening behind the closed door? And as much as we've not been there, God has not left us in the dark. He gave us an idea of the few things that could happen to people the moment they cross to that place. And look at me, beloved brethren. The first thing is when you get there, they will welcome you and say, welcome. You are welcome. Welcome back from your labors. Welcome back from the journey on earth. But records have before us that when you were leaving heaven to go to mother earth, you were endowed with some potentials. Nobody came to this mother earth empty. You are endowed with gifts, talents, abilities, potentials. Excuse, sir. Excuse me, sir. What did you do with it? That's all we want to know. That's the question they're asking at the back door. I was coming in and I saw some things written in Sister Bukola's handwriting. The things she wanted to do to touch lives, to impact lives, they will have asked her when she got there and she would say, these are the things I have done. And Jesus Christ will say, you are my daughter. Every one of us will be asked that question. Romans chapter 14 and verse number 12. Romans 14 and verse number 12. The Bible says, so then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Whatever you forgot to account for, beloved brethren, heaven will reveal it. And that is shown in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse number 14. You are supposed to give an account. By the time you finish giving an account, you forgot to mention one or two things. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 14 says, For God shall bring every work into judgment every Every, with every secret things, the things you don't confess by yourself, the things you don't think anybody knows about, they will dig it out and bring it out, whether it be good or whether it be evil. As a teacher, can I go back, step back a little before I move on? I have said to you, the almighty God determines how long each man will stay on earth. I have said to you, that Job says, and it's in the Bible, and that's the plan of God, every man born of woman is of few days. Nobody is immortal except God, so everyone will go one day. I have also said to you, when the doors are shut behind us, something is happening behind that door. The first thing is welcome. The second thing is the gifts and talents we gave to you. How did you use it to impact lives? Did you spend all your money alone? All your abilities alone? The talents we gave to you, you think the money we give to you is for you alone? Oh, I know you sent your children to school. You, you, you shouldn't have sent them to school. That would have been your cup of tea. How many lives did you touch? How many lives did you impact? How many people or places from where you are not expecting reward or returns did you invest in? How many, how many fatherless did you touch? 
How many motherless did you touch? How many people did you help? What did you do on Mother Earth? Beloved brethren, we are here to learn. We want to be where Sister Bukola is. We don't want to hear a word of condemnation at the end when the doors are closed to this Mother Earth. The place we are going out there, behind the when the door is closed, behind the doors, is an organized world. It's an organized place. An organized world where records are kept. Revelations chapter 20 and verse number 12. Revelations 20 and verse number 12. And it says, And I saw the dead, small and great. They stand before God. And the books were open. They keep records out there. It says the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. I go back to that scripture again. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And it says the books, there's a plural there. Watch, watch out for it. The books were open. And another book, singular one, a singular book, another book was open. So we have the books. Then we have book. That book carries the book, the, the book of life. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, your names are written there. But in the books, the books record the things you do on earth, records the works of your hand, records how you use your life, your gifts, your talents to impact lives. Those are the things that are waiting for you. Don't forget this title. The title says, what is happening behind the closed doors? We need to know what is happening there is the most important thing that will guide the way we live on earth. The books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life. That one records whether you are born again or not. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Beloved brethren, you are going there. One day you are going there. Whether you, are 150, whether you want to go at 150 years old, I'm okay. Whether you want to stay for 200 years old, I'm okay. No matter how long you stay on Mother Earth, you are going to cross. And when you cross, the books will be opened for you. A man will be judged out of those books. The next thing that will happen to him in this new phase will be determined by the things that are written in the books. Revelations 14, 13. Revelations 14, 13. It says, And I heard the voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. Read with me the last part. One, two, read. So as you are going, the works will be following. In, out there, there are the works that you do on earth. If you are a good person on earth, that star will follow you through eternity. Eternity is one million years times one million years. It cannot be changed. If you are a selfish man on us, that is how the stamp will be on your head all throughout. And it's going to determine where a man ends. Beloved brethren, as I end this message, I said to you, the way she's smiling is the way she's looking at us. And she's saying to you, sir, please. She's in a good place. She's saying to you, please, cheer up. Cheer up. Be good. Receive it. She's there. She wants you to come and meet her when you finish. She desires that all of us, none of us, we end in hell. She desires that we should do what she was doing. Prepare your life. Prepare your programs. 
plant the little money you have in your hand. You think you don't have money? The little you have in your land, in your hand. How many other people's children are you paying their fees? People you don't know. How many lives are you touching? How many people's house rent are you paying? Who are not your relations? As you do those things, they are written down for you. They are the things that will be used to judge you. The works you do, the good ones you do, the bad ones will receive bad results. We want to go and meet her when we finish here. The date we are going is not in our hands. It's in the hands of God. But the day we eventually go, I pray we will all finish well. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please bow down with me. Let us pray. A Father who art in heaven will bless your holy name. Thank you, faithful God. Your word says, that scripture we read at the beginning says, it is better to go to the house of mourning because the living we know that that is the end of all men. Lord, we know that one day service of songs will be conducted on our behalf. But our desire, Father, is that when we finish, we will reign with you in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to impact lives and to do good works here, right here on earth. Father, grant unto us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For everyone that have heard this word tonight, those both here, both those that are here physically and those that are watching virtually, I pray the grace for us to take this word and use it to affect our lives for better. Father, grant unto us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be thy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Next, we will take the reading, reading of the biography, and that will be done by Bukola's sister, Bukola, by Bukola's brother, Olumide Jones. Can he please come forward? Let's put our hands together for him, please. Sister Bukola Bolaji Kolapusan was born to the Jones family of Ibori in Abakuta on the 31st of March 1967. Uh, her brother, the late Funsho Jones, and Mrs. Viola Atoke Jones. Uh, she was the eldest of us three children. Uh, she attended Trinity Primary and Nozzle School in Abakuta between 1970 and 1976. Abakuta Girls Grammar School between 1977 and 1982. Uh, Good State Polytechnic graduated with A-levels between 1982 and 1984. Uh, she proceeded to University of Lagos between 1984 and 1989. And later went to University of Technology, Oweri, uh, between 2002 and 2004. She had a Bachelor's uh, of Science in Geophysics uh, from the University of Lagos and a Master's of Business Administration Project Management from the Federal University of Technology, Oweri. Uh, but call her my sister, me Jones was a trainee in Chevron Lagos in 1986 and mobile produced in Lagos in 1987. Uh, she did that NYC in Shell in Worry between 1990 and 1991. Then she then worked for the exploration department of Shell in Port Harcourt between 1991 and June 1992. Uh, she joined an NPC IDSL Benin by mid of 1992. While she was in an NPC, she worked in, in sundry sections at diverse times like IDSL Benin, IDSL Portacot, Napims Lagos, and Combed Lagos up to our death. My sister was a deaconess, an ordained minister of the Redeemed Church, Christian Church of God, RCCG. She also attended the RCCG School of Discipline in RCCG Bible College until she was called home to glory. At 
1.30 on the 1st of October, 2020. Uh, when she was called home to glory, <sighs> she was the head of the welfare department of RCCG, Prince of Peace Parish, Badoria, Jail, Lagos. She was the founder and the chairperson of Bukola Olafison Foundation, BOF, whose motto was affecting humanity through giving. She was a giver for those who know her or who knew her. The foundation was founded on Galatians 6, uh, Galatians 6, 10, which says, therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. Our objectives for the foundation were to empower and to support widows, orphans, and the hungry, at the same time leading them to the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. She was the covenant daughter of Zion, a giver, a strong believer. She was a friend to the mothers of the most of her friends, a gift to humanity. She touched lives with forever living testimonies. My beautiful sister met her husband in 1991 in Port Harcourt and they got married on 23rd of September 1995. She was committed and a loving wife and a biological mother of two wonderful children. She was friendly, jovial, with infectious smile, loving and charming. She had a disarming smile, very detailed and meticulous. She was extremely loyal to her family as most of them uh, and her friends, as most of them did back to her secondary school days and undergraduate days. She was the pillar, the strategist, and the chief planner of the Wali and Bukola Olafison dynasty. Our hobbies included reading, photography, advising, counseling of teenagers and young adults and traveling. To her husband of 25 years, she was Bukola, my wife, BMW. A lot of people do not know this. I'm, I'm trying not to go off script, but it would be nice to acknowledge the husband too. Sometimes we acknowledge people when they pass away, but we forget those who are actually living. I call him Brother Wale because I never had an older brother. He's been a tremendous pillar to the family. He's been a wonderful guy, an amazing guy. Dawali, I have to thank you no matter what happens. You've been great. We appreciate you as a family. Only God will thank you enough. When your wife passed away, you said to me, Olumide, when I die, I'm going to sleep next to her. So I'm going to buy two spaces in that cemetery. She'll be on the left and I'll be on the right. That is what a real man does. Thank you. I'll leave it there. Take the, the uh, we'll invite Sister Rosemary Dong. She here. Sister Rome, Rosemary. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. I welcome you to this service of songs as we celebrate 
the mourning, the passing on to glory of Mrs. Bukala Olajoko Olapiso. In my wildest imagination, I never thought I would be standing here to present an eulogy of Baby Buki, as I fondly called her, at a time when we should be discussing and planning our future. Buki and I met at the University of Lagos, where we had both gone to write a recruitment exam. I must say we, we hit Buki was simply irresistible. I mean, most those that know her very well, it was very easy to, to just connect with Buki. Buki was simply irresistible, amazing. She possessed a bubbly and approachable personality. She just simply exemplified life itself. For I have only known very few people that have lived life as fully as my dear friend did. Buki literally lit up a room she entered with her presence. I recall we used to say she could stop traffic. She was warm, she was compassionate, she was vibrant and well endowed. A woman with a sassy sense of humor that endeared her to those who came in contact with her. The long-lasting friendships she established over the years are testament to that. If Buki were to be looking down at us now, I believe she would be very pleased and honored to see that we could all make it here today. This is because her family and her friends meant the entire world to her. The torrents of heartfelt experiences from the hundreds of lives Buki touched echo in my head with examples of her tireless and determined efforts to assist people who approached her. All of these things fit the description of a woman who was independent, she was courageous, she was very generous, she was sensitive, kind, of high integrity. Her, her decision to run a foundation for the needy was evidence of her eagerness to impact lives. It brings to mind an incident I know in Benin City, Edo State, where Buki had these neighbors living with two teenage girls that could hardly go by. Buki took it upon herself to care for these girls financially while mentoring them to reduce the pressure of the day-to-day -day struggles from their parents. She was not related to them. She never knew them. They were simply just neighbors that were in need. She was a great woman with a big and very kind heart. Her sense of dignity, faith, and strength was never so tested nor so well demonstrated as in the final year, weeks, and days of her life. She maintained full control of her faculties and maximized her ability to interact with the family and friends who visited her. Perhaps her whimsical approach to life kept Up till her last day, she was always able to crack a joke and more often than not, laughed at herself in ways which had so many of us laughing and laughing and cracking our, ourselves so much of the time we were around her. I must say that I mean, if, 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 if any one of you did see her towards the, the, the end, it was incredible to see someone that could crack jokes even at that, at that period, knowing what she was going through. Buki was also a family woman. Her love for her family and children was unrivaled only, of course, by her love for God. She wasn't going to retire for the night if her husband had not returned, from, returned home from work. During my occasion, occasional visits, I would think Buki was asleep because I spent most of the time with her. Anytime I was around, I would be in her room till she sleeps off and then I retire. So I would think she would be asleep just for her to suddenly sit up once she heard her husband's car drive through the gate. 
She was always alert to the needs of her family. She would always end her conversations with, please help me thank your brother. And that would be her dear husband, Brother Wale. Or please help me greet or talk to Ore and Nife. Those were her children. Those are her children. As I mentioned earlier, Buki trusted God always. And it did not matter what the outcome of this difficult medical condition was going to be. She just loved and trusted him for the best. She, much more than we probably, probably did, trusted God for his perfect will in her life. She would often say, I don't know why God is not answering me, but I will trust him anyway and will accept whatever the outcome. I'm confident that Buki's soul is resting in the bosom of her creator. Buki wasn't perfect. Far from it. She was so meticulous, it has been mentioned, very organized, very meticulous. That could be a virtue in whatever she undertook to accomplish. But it could sometimes be annoying to a friend or someone around, and maybe frustrating depending on one's perception. We took turns then to spend the weekend in each other's homes during the early days of our career in Benin. No matter where we slept, Buki would make the beds. Don't waste your time, baby Rose, she would say. You just simply can't make this bed the way I would want to sleep in it. So just get away and let me make this bed. And so that was it. Now, that would be frustrating initially, but in the end, she would, it was always just that she meant well. She was also quick to make corrections. Most times, in very strong terms, with maybe a few foul name calling, and if one is quick to take offense, you would think she was mean, and you wouldn't, and you wouldn't have been more wrong if, if you knew her very well. In typical bookie style, she would soon be cracking jokes as though none of that ever happened, and most times she would have just have it would have just have been just friendly banter. Am I making any sense? Am I babbling or am I blabbling? Where am I taking all this? The truth is that no matter what happened, Buki remained true to herself. After all, no one is really perfect except God. Finally, for her sake and for each one of us, I ask that we take a moment shift our thoughts from how much we would miss her or how much we, we pain, we hurt at this time to our own many private, funny, joking, laughing, happy, and comical moments that we might, might have shared with her one time or the other. And I'm sure there were many for some of us. Let us draw strength from the Lord's promise of eternal life until we meet to part no more. Dear family and friends, ladies and gentlemen, friends and families of our dear Buki, brief, briefly relieve and just take the happy moments you shared with her, enjoy them and keep them, keep them in your memories. I urge us from all you have heard about her, from the biography and so many other things we we'll read from the program. We know by now what her dreams were. I just urge us to please hold her dream. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Rosemary. Uh, next, we'll have a special rendition from a saxophonist. Please keep come on stage. Thank <laughs> you. 
Saxophonist, thank you so much. Well done. Next, we'd like to take the tributes, and the first one we'll be taking will be that of uh, Bukolas Parish, RCCG Prince of Peace. It will be a Victoria um, tribute because pictures say a lot more than words will say. Uh, technical, please, can you?
seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved, to be loved as to always love another. For it is in giving that we receive from you. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. God grant me the serenity to accept the thing. Thank you, Prince of Peace, for that beautiful piece. Next, we will call a representative from NNPC to come and give tribute. We would like to call, at this point, Engineer Dr. Louis Bugu, the General Manager, Shipping and Terminal Operation, Crude Oil Marketing Division, NNPC. Can we put our hands together for him, please? So much. Yeah, good evening, my brothers and sisters. I bring greetings of uh, Group Managing Director, uh, Madam Kerry, Meli Kerry. I bring greetings of my Group General Manager, Sir Billy Okoyo, and on my behalf of myself and the whole staff of uh, <clears throat> Shipping and Terminal of crude oil marketing department. Uh, we're here to succeed with the family on this great loss. She's a good sister. I remember when we were here last week, last month, one of my GGM wrote, he says at that time, my sister and our colleague, when I lead a team of crude oil marketing staff of NMPC to visit you last month, there was no indication we wouldn't see you again. Your loving and caring husband was on hand to welcome us. Remember, we prayed with you and discussed the Thanksgiving service of your recovery. Very surprisingly, we received the sad news of your passing away. Only God knows why, and we cannot question him. We are crying, we are in pain. We love you, and we shall miss you in NMPC. Raised in the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ where there is no pain or worry. That was what my group managing director wrote. And I'm um, just uh, assumed duty as a shipping and terminal manager only in July. So I, I haven't worked with her, but I will invite the former general manager shipping and terminal, Mr. Combs, to come up please and speak on her if he's around. Is Mr. Bob Manuel around? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Buki worked with three general managers before she died. The present one, myself, and Mr. Dimla. We have put our heads together to write this and have compressed it to this small page. Our hearts are filled with sorrow this moment sorrow that is profound and personal. Mrs. Buki Olafiso has silently closed the door of life and departed from us. In the words of Albert Einstein, he said, the value of a man should be seen in what he gives and not what he can receive. 
in one word, in one word, Mrs. Olafison was a woman who gave. She gave much to her work, and that is why, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here to say goodbye to her. I would like to speak on in celebration of her life. Here was a life that exuded in her in a small way and content excellence. A life that exemplified brilliance. A life worth emulating. A life worth to be role modeled. Though the late Mrs. Olafison joined the department, shipping and terminals of crude oil marketing division as a DM in 2007, we had known her via the introduction by the present GMD Malamele Kiare as a former colleague of his in IDSL. IDSL is Integrated Data Service Limited. He stressed that Buki was a, an ardent team player with high level of professionalism in her conduct. This she showed until her last days when she struggled with ill health. Until her death, she was a manager of legal zone operations of the shipping and terminal operations. Mrs. Bukala Olafison was an invaluable personnel, strategic thinker, an astute manager who was brilliant, innovative, and creative. Hence, she contributed immensely to the development of the zone in various capacities. She generously impacted us with her knowledge, skills, managerial competence, and technical expertise. She initiated and implemented proactive innovations and strategic frameworks aimed at improving service delivery and efficiency during the last four years she was in the division. As a manager, she led her staff in such a way that she exemplified leadership and camaraderie. She endeared her co-workers, senior officers and subordinates officers with positive energy, commitment, focus, passion and inspiration. She had a beautiful smile a sense of humor, and a gentle demeanor. She was always willing to share her ideas and information on topical issues. Many of us found her to be a very splendid person, a great intellect, and a big heart. She never remained quiet if she believed in the correct subject. By her death, all the people who knew her will miss a highly intelligent, vibrant, individual with a rare friendliness and charisma. Mrs. Olafison was a genuinely warm and wonderful individual, one we will miss greatly. I take solace in the fact that I had the privilege to know her as a colleague because I learned a lot from her, even as the HOG. Mrs. Olafison was a shining example of how wonderful person can be. She was a good boss to the people in her charge, a loving wife to her husband, and a devoted mother to her children. She was also a great friend to many of us and a supportive colleague. Our deepest sympathies and prayers are with the family of Mrs. Olafison at this most difficult time. Adlai Stevenson, this is the quotation from Dimla the first GM that she worked with. At last, Stephen, the U.S. ambassador to the United States, he lived 1961 to 1965, once commented about a man and his contribution. It is not the years in life. It is not the years in life that counts. It is the life in the years. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Bukola Olafison lived. We will all miss her. Rest in peace, my dear sister. Thank you. So on that note, uh, this is our uh, uh, message from NMPC and the NMPC group as a whole, which the family, the 42, to bear the loss. Thank you so much. Next, to say their tribute, 
will be a representative from Olafison's family, and that will be Mr. Kode Olafison. Can you please come to the stage? Can we put our hands together for him, please? Mom, you're here as you're fondly called by us, had mostly adopted all those who met you, directly or indirectly, and friends who today celebrate your life. You are one in a million, a woman of charity, a great disciplinarian whose principle and integrity were truly outstanding. The news of your transition was both sudden and deeply sad, but also an occasion to praise, honor, and thank our God for having bestowed on us a very blessed, joyous, and fruitful life with you and your family, and with all of us all. Our dear wife, mother, sister, big auntie, and a friend, how can we describe you? That will be appropriate enough for your impact upon our lives. A sacrificial and selfless woman to all who have met her. You had the ability and the gifts to appease, console, and make everyone you talk to feel loved and convincingly appreciated. You, a wife, mother, sister, auntie, and friend who had time not only for the members of your family, but for all of us all. Odigoshu from the Olafisans worldwide. Thank you. Next to give their tribute will be um, a representative from the Jones family. And that will be Bimbo Oluyinka. Praise the Lord. I want to bless God for the life of my sister, Bukola. I want to thank God for the bond of love that brought us all together. We share a great grandmother, and we were all brought up to love one another. We were brought up to be in unity. We may not see often, but any time Buki and I meet, we connect. I remember when she was going to get married, she told me, she said, Sister, I'm getting married, and I love him, and I know he loves me. And I'm not surprised. That relationship is a great one. My brother, God will comfort you. God will be your strength. You will not see man, you will see God. Ore and the brother, Nifemi, the Lord will uphold him. Buki was truth personified. She doesn't pretend. 
you know where she is. If she doesn't want something, she doesn't want it. And that's it. In the process, she could have stepped on toes. But like our friend said, nobody is perfect. The night she passed on, I couldn't sleep. I was worried. I said, did we miss something? Could we have done more for one another? The last time I saw Buki was August 2019. We met in camp. Like I said earlier, but when we see, there's a way we communicate. And that day too, we communicated. We held hands. We prayed. And she told me she was traveling that night. When I saw my brother, Wally, the battle was well fought. Nothing that could be done was, not, was left undone. But God knows best. And our confidence, and that's what I want to leave us with. We had our testimony. A day is coming. Every one of us, we are going one day. If we don't go this way, Jesus is coming. When that time comes, what's going to happen to you and I? What's going to happen to you and I? There is nothing we do now. If we cry from morning to night, it's not going to make a difference to Buki. But our consolation, our hope is that she's with the Lord. What will be the hope of people when you pass on? It is well. It is well with the family. It is well with the body of Christ. It is well. It is well. It is well. Buki, you know we love you. The next tribute will be taken uh, from a staff of uh, Bukala Olafi Sons Foundation, BOF, and that will be Mrs. Yechunde Rumoduyi. Please can you come forward. Let's put our hands together for her. Good evening, everybody. I have not prepared for this, but God is in control. Um, I knew her about 12 years ago, this period 12 years ago in October, uh, October at Prince of Peace. And we clicked. Our parish mommy created a group for children's um, mother's day or something. And then she was part of us. And she mentioned she's new in Lagos. I mean, that she, she just moved to Lagos from Port Harcourt. And I was going for a program, a ladies' program. So I just said, ah, this person that is new, we want to have fun. I just invited her. And then she came. In fact, I was surprised because she's way older than me. Right from then, we became good friends. And that particular program, we had this karaoke. Everybody, every table had to sing. She was on our table. They now chose me as the youngest to lead. And I said, she will have to back up. She said, she cannot back up. She will take pictures. I said, okay. And then she started taking pictures of everything. And at the end of the day, our table won. They said, because we came with a photographer. So we call her loves taking pictures. We all know that. I knew her right then. Like, hey. And then she, she, each time she has things, she would tell me, you know, we just click. And people wonder how. This person, she's strict. She's principled. She, how do you blend? She doesn't take nonsense. I call her Tacha. And people don't understand. But I have learned so much from her. I have learned to, you know, just to deal with that kind of person. For those that does not know her, 
She's a wonderful being. When she was going to birth uh, BOF, that was about four years ago, she mentioned to me there's somebody in our office that does something, something, and she's impressed. And you won't believe this person is younger than me. And he's doing something for displayed people somewhere. I said, eh. Hey. Said she wants to do it. Said, okay. She said she wants to call it BOF, Bukola Lati. So I said, oh, buff, buff. We will not be calling it buff. Like, like puff, puff, buff, buff. Don't name it BOF. Put, give us something. She said, I want to use my name. I don't, don't use your name, Sir Bukola. It sounds somehow. She said, I want to create a legacy. I said, okay, if you want it. And then she said, I want it to be on board. Uh -huh. Me. So I'm like, for you to approve me, I must be doing something good. She's not easily to, you can't, you can't please. She's always on point. You have to be there. I said, okay, I'm ready. Anyhow, I'll follow you. I said, okay, how do we do it? How do we launch? How do we, we were planning to launch big when this happened. I said, no. If we have to launch big, maybe this is a way for us to launch big. People must see. People must hear. And I want everybody to know that. Not because she, she was not feeling fine, then she now thought about it. That was why I insisted that that vision she wrote four, five years ago must be captured. So people would know that. It's not even because she knew and she might not make. No, 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 no. This is her. We were both working together uh, in church uh, on the welfare department. So she, this is the kind of person she is. She gives. She's always ready. She listens to you even though she would, it appears she's not listening, but she knows what she wants to do. She will make up her mind if she, if you are lucky, if you are not lucky, but it's still in her heart. She will still want to do it. That's a kind of person. I will surely miss you, Sister Bukola. You've been my strength. I don't know. It's hard for me, but I thank God for meeting you. I have learned a lot. She's intelligent. You don't get. She would calculate metric tons using without calculator. So I said, this is how I do it. She's way better than me. She calls me Sister Yetunde. I call her Sabukola. And when I tell her Sabukola, how are we going to do tomorrow? Salad day, how are we going to deliberate? It's like, ah, pick where to, you want us to go to. Hey, something's happening somewhere, somewhere. Hey, let's go. We always trip around. I made sure that she would tell me every month, where do we do? How do we do? She's always made sure she had fun. The last time I spoke with her, Sabukola, I miss you so much. I miss all the fun that we used to have together. I miss us going out. I miss us going to Bankulimo. You know all those joints? She would tell me, discover. You go and discover. I will invite her. And she won't say she won't go. You know, I, I told her, I said, I cannot wait for God to heal you. We are praying, you know. That was the last time I spoke to her. Every other time, I would chat with her. Even through chatting, I told her I had a case of a teenage pregnancy. The girl had a child. I said, Bukala, I don't know how to help this person. She now said, okay, don't worry. She sent someone to me to give the girl baby things and everything. Do not mention my name. I said, okay. And I gave it to them. I said, I work for a foundation. They don't, you can't know them. You don't know this foundation, but this is what they want. Even though she was very sick, she still cares. She still had people. She still wants to do. <sighs> I don't know. I don't even know how to end this thing. Thank you. Um, Pastor Koku would like to make um, a donation to the foundation. So just, you just come up and say something. Let's put our hands together. Praise the Lord. Children of God, praise the Lord. The day that I appointed Bukola Olafison as the HOD welfare, it was in the presence of my wife we were seated together in the office, and we asked her what her passion was and what department she would like to be. She immediately said welfare. No other department but welfare. 
Bukola Lafiso did exceedingly well in the welfare department. Exceedingly well to the entire church. Exceedingly well to the youth of the church. Exceedingly well to the community. Exceedingly well to people we don't even know. May our soul rest in peace in Jesus' name. And that day that I appointed her as the HOD welfare, I knew that it was a department I could never take away from her. On many occasions, I tried to make her and the husband, you know, to establish their own parish. I had an objective for that. He said passionately to me, leave me in welfare department. <sighs> we share a lot in common, and I don't want to go into the details. The two of us, the families, that is why we gel together. I know that she had ideas about welfare department. At times she would tell me, Daddy, this is what is happening. What do I do? We would brainstorm. She would go and implement. She would come back with the knocks and say, Daddy, this is what they are saying. But I don't care. I don't care means I know what is proper. And everything that they have said on this pulpit is Bukola Lapiso. She did this work passionately well. And that is why I'm here today on behalf of the redeemed Christian Church of God, the Prince of Peace Parish, to let the Olafeson family know that we are partnering BOF. <laughs> and this is our first contribution because I know Bokola had passion for children especially. This will go in as Bostria Awards to children of the needy. God bless you. Thank you. The next tribute will be taken by a friend, and that will be Reverend Moses Olua Poroku. Please, can you come forward? Let's put our hands together for him, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say, body on me uh, to be able to make it to this place today. Uh, Bukola, or love is was not just another person. She was my daughter. My heart is so heavy. Even in spite of what I know, that we shall meet again. I remember when she was in transfer. She came to me and said, Pastor, I want to use my to buy a generator for the church. I want to leave something behind that will produce light. She leave as a light to our generation. She spent a gift a spiritual gift she invested her heart she did not give up with every ability that she has to touch life. It was important to know that our personality, our experiences in life was something that everyone could learn from.
Personally, my wife has not recovered. Kabuki was an evangelist. They would drive their car to the ghetto in Port Harcourt with foodstuffs, clothing, to where they never knew them before. And they would stand and put up music from the car to attract people, and they would donate foodstuff, clothing. They were giving scholarship to indigent students. She was an amazing personality. You never met Buki and remained the same. I took time off from the pulpit ministry at the time. And I said, I want to go study law. She was, she pushed herself into it and said, Daddy, if this is what you want to do at this time, I'm going to support you. Every time I pass through Lagos, they will come with a ticket for me to travel out. I did my law program in South Africa at the time. They were all part of our life. Okay. I can never forget you. Let the night turn to the day and day back to night. You will ever remain green in our heart. Your love for humanity is beyond what I can talk about here. And everybody bear witnesses to the fact that one of the very shining lights in the kingdom of God has come back to meet our creator. To the family, friends, people in the leadership together with her, please, let's keep praying for the family. Wale, Olaf, is need our support at this moment, and the children. And Grandma Viola, Please keep them up in prayer. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you all. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance over you. And grant everyone here, the calling in the office, a peace that passes all understanding. Thank you for this honor to talk to about the caller. Brother Wally, please, you have to be strong now. Be strong for her and for the children. No one can replace her in your life. It's irreplaceable. But I know the Holy Spirit will be your strength the Holy Spirit will keep you and comfort you more and more. Please be strong. Thank you, everybody. I came with a group from Port Harcourt to come celebrate this life. Thank you. I'll just say, I'll uh, just share some things myself. As the anchor person for today's program, uh, very few people know me, but uh, I'm Bukola Lafison's adopted junior brother. That happened courtesy of Mommy Atoke Jones. Mommy Jones saw me for the first time. She fell in love with me. 
and she took me like a son. And all the years I was away, my friends knew that every first Sunday of the month, someone will call me. Once we are together, the phone rings. They say, your mommy is calling. I said, yes. And that's how we became close. It was our mom that brought the two of us together. And then she said, now you are my brother because my mom has taken you in. We're very close. The last two years, no day passed apart from the last three weeks before her death that we don't exchange message. Is that I'm sending or she's sending? Every day we are in touch. Two years ago, I was my birthday. Bukala made a special mug for me. And since then, anytime I have a breakfast, that is the mug that I use. And even moving forward, that will be the mug I continue to use because why? It's a mug from a special person. The second gift she gave me that year was a work clock. That clock is the only clock in my bedroom. When we wake up, myself and my wife, we look at the clock. It reminds me of uh, it was a customized clock. We shared something in common, and that was traveling. Anytime Bukola was traveling, she would text me, I'm going to this place. So what should I be doing? What should I be eating? I remember when I think it was her 50th, Pastor Wale took her to Mexico. So when she got to Mexico, she texted me, said, brother, I'm in Mexico. So what food should I look for? She's very picky with food. And I told her, okay, don't worry. When you go, I'll tell them they should give you empanadas. He said, what is that? I said, don't worry. Uh, in South America, they call it empanadas, but in Mexico, they call it enchiladas. That's like our meat pie. That they have different varieties. Just tell them they should give you empanadas with beef. And she said, okay. So the next thing you can ask them to give you was tacos. At least those you would, those would go well with your stomach. And when she came back, she was very grateful. She was very happy. We kept in touch during that period. Last year, she traveled to Dubai. And I think I, th I, think I was in Senegal. She texted me that I'm in Dubai. What do I do? I said, okay, do this, do this, do this. Then in between, I said, okay, why not go for the four by four desert ride? And she said, ah, that is too risky. I'm not interested. So, and we joked about it, and she came back. And she went the second time. I said, okay, why not give it a try now? So we talked about it. I said, okay, you know what? That when Pastor Wale comes with me, we will go together. That did not happen. So, Pastor Wale, please, when you go to Dubai, take the 4 by 4 desert ride. Not an easy one, but that was something Bukola wanted you people to do together. Bukola was a wonderful person. And I ask each person here, let us use Bukola's life as an example. So when something happens to us, people don't have to come here and lie about your life or struggle about what to say. Bukola meant a lot to everyone. When the pastor, the friend, Reverend Moses says on me, he said, because I said, I wanted to give light. Let us be light wherever we go. Let us be people that make a difference. Bukola already brought in containers for a foundation. I'm sure sometime in the future, that foundation will be launched. I urge each person in this hall, when that time comes, let us give a token and let us support that foundation because that is something that she was passionate about. That's something she would appreciate if she were to be alive. That's the last respect we can give to her. And as often as we can, let us reach out to the foundation and support our vision. Our vision must live beyond her. Thank you so much. Next, we'll take the prayer for the family and we'll invite...
to the stage again, uh, provincial pastor, Pastor Akumiari, to come and take a prayer for the family. I can I request that the husband and the immediate family members please rise up and move forward. Step forward. Can I equally please request that everybody be upstanding? Two prayers you will join us to say this evening. The first is, the Bible says to us that in anything, everything, what should we do? Give thanks. So we're going to thank God Almighty for a life well spent. We're going to thank God Almighty for the beautiful testimonies we've had. We're going to thank God Almighty for this family. Please go ahead and pray for this family in one minute. Please go ahead and just say thank you to God Almighty. Thank you for the life of Bukola, Sister Bukola Olafiso. Thank you for the husband. Thank you for the children. Thank you, Lord Almighty, for the grace you give unto her to impact lives, to touch lives. Thank you for the contact he had, she had with every one of us here. Thank you, Lord, for the husband and the children. You've been with them since this period. Thank you for this program we set ahead, we planned, and you brought today to come to pass. We're thanking you for what you will do tomorrow. Glory be to God Almighty. Round up your prayers now. In Jesus' name we pray. Or can I ask you to please say all manners of prayers for this family, that the good hand of the Lord will rest upon them. The great God of comfort will comfort them on every side. There's indeed a big vacuum, a big vacuum that the Lord Almighty will fill this vacuum. Please lift up Pastor Wally, very specially, a friend of so many years, have just left him. Pray that the God Almighty will uphold him, the Lord will keep him, the Lord will protect him, the Lord will fill that vacuum, the Lord will give him the fortitude to bear that vacuum, the good God Almighty will go deep down into his heart in his private moments, and comfort him. Pray for the children where they are. That the Lord Almighty will be with them. The great God Almighty will comfort them on every side. Round up your prayers now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In everything, God, you taught us to thank you. We are thanking you, Lord Almighty, for this gift you give to us. For this angel, you are allowed to pass through our lives. Thank you for the impact. Thank you for a life, a fruitful life. Thank you, Lord Almighty, for the children, the husband, the family. Thank you for the church. Thank you for great testimonies that we have listened to today concerning a human being. Glory be to your name. Be praised forever, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, since the day you have, she's gone to be with you. You have kept the man, you have kept the family, you have kept the children. You did not allow the devil to strike this family. We return majesty and praise unto you, dear Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you once more, O oh God, for allowing us to plan this program and bringing today to come to pass. Thanking you ahead for tomorrow, knowing fully well. That you, God, that did today, you will perfect tomorrow. Be exalted, Father Lord, in Jesus' name. O oh Lord God Almighty, we lift up the family unto you. Both the family from the husband's side and the family from the wife's side. Lord Almighty, we pray that you will comfort them in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray they have, they have lost a, a gem. 
Lord Almighty, we pray you will comfort them in the name of Jesus. You will put an end to incidences like this in the two families in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, God, you, will, you are the great God of comfort deep down in them. You will meet with them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the children where they are. Heavenly Father, we ask, oh God, that in their private moments, you will comfort them. You will be with them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we pray that every desire of Sister Bukola concerning her children, much more and above it, you will do for these children in the name of Jesus. When they will look back, look around to look for their mother, Lord, you will appear to them and meet them at the point of their needs in the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we pray that these children will excel. They will be successful in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray for Pastor Wally. Dear Heavenly Father, you see, in marriage, one plus one is one. That means a part of that one, half is gone. And this man must become one and standing again. Lord, we pray you will be with him in the name of Jesus. We pray he will not crumble. Emotionally, he will not crumble. We pray you will strengthen him. You will strengthen him spiritually. Strengthen him emotionally in the name of Jesus. When he goes to bed and there's nobody around him, God Almighty, I pray you will reveal yourself unto him in the name of Jesus. I pray you will strengthen him in the name of Jesus. I pray you will comfort him in the name of Jesus. You will grant him the fortitude, the strength within to bear this vacuum in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we are praying for a special visitation for your son. That in his private moments, he will see you. In his private moment, you will appear to him. In his private moment, you will speak to him. You will send the angels to strengthen him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, in that home, Lord, your presence will not depart. You will not be a visitor in that house. You will dwell in that house. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Almighty, whatsoever will look around, will happen to him that will make him to look around and say, where is my wife? If my wife were here, Lord Almighty, I pray you will show up on his behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. You will arise for him and fight for him and fight his battles. Every, every, every role that Sister Bukola has been playing in this life. Almighty, it's a vacuum, but you can feel this vacuum. Lord Almighty, I pray you will visit your son afresh and anew in the name of Jesus. Comfort beyond imagination that will make him to say, where did I get this strength from? Release upon your son in the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, I pray for the entire family that you will be with them in Jesus' name. I pray for the church of God that you will keep your church. Your church will continue to march on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, the church has lost a strong hand. We pray, Lord Almighty, you will comfort in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord Almighty, for that fellowship that is now missing. Lord, you will replace in the name of Jesus. We pray for that foundation. Lord Almighty, that Sister Bukola started. Heavenly Father, we pray you will send help from all over and this vision will live far beyond her in the name of Jesus. Thank you our Father. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name O Lord. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. God bless you. Please you may go back to your seats. Thank you. Can we put our eyes together for Pastor Agumbiari? Next, we'll be taking uh, uh, announcements for today. And to take the announcement for us, 
will be Pastor Damola Abolade. Can we put our hands together for him, please? Praise the Lord. First of all, thank you everybody for being here today. Um, the most important announcement is that there will be a service here tomorrow and the time is 10 o'clock prompt. And also if you look into your, your booklets, you'll probably see the, the next item after the service here tomorrow. We'll be proceeding to the burial ground where our dear sister mother will be finally laid to rest there. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together, please. Next, we'll be taking our vote of thanks. And to take the vote of thanks, we'll call on our brother Lomide Jones. To come and take the vote of thanks. Uh, on behalf of the Olafi Sons and Job, very big thank you to everybody uh, for creating the time. To be here, uh, we appreciate you, even though circumstances are not the right circumstances. But we still have to say a very big thank you, and we hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Take. Uh, last hymn and the closing prayer. We'd just like to invite the saxophonist once more just to play a song for Pastor Wally. This is a song that Pastor Wally likes and the wife likes a lot also. So, the saxophonist just plays a song for Pastor Wally. <laughs> Pastor Wally, that was for you and Sister Bukola. Next, we'll take our closing hymn, and Pastor Sheo Mobolaji will be leading us with the closing hymn. Praise the Lord. Shall we rise as we take the closing hymn? Hark, hark, my soul. Angelic songs are swelling. I'm going to take the lead. 
la 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 We'll call on Pastor Folisha Koku to come and give us our closing prayer. Sorry, before the closing prayer, I would like to recognize the saxophonist. Let's give him a round of applause, please. This young gentleman, I'll call him, was introduced to Prince of Peace Parish by Bokola and Wally Olafison. It was a special anniversary vigil. And he took the entire church by a positive storm. We've been introducing you as the saxophonist. We want you to tell us your name, your age, please. God bless you, my dear. My name is Timja Okaudi. I'm 13 years old. 
Tell us, since when did you start to play the saxophone? I started learning the saxophone at the age of four, and I started playing professionally at the age of six. Let's clap for Jesus. The Almighty God will bless you in Jesus' name. You will excel in life in Jesus' name. You will be super great in Jesus' name. You will take the world by storm, positive storm in Jesus' name. So shall it be in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's clap for Jesus on behalf of this boy. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate him because before we started this service, we didn't know what to do because the entire choir and a lot of members of our congregation, members that want to come from the family from other places are stuck in the traffic even including the wife of our provincial pastor who wants to be here as well. So he's been in the traffic, almost the same spot for hours and called us that she had to call it off. The same thing with the wife of Azuna pastor. So for this young gentleman to step in as one man choir, please let us appreciate him one more time. God bless you and God bless you my sister as well. Thank you. To Pastor Wale, my right hand man, be strong and of a good courage. God is with you. As I said to you, be strong, especially for your children. And to Ore and Ifemi, because I know that you are with us in fellowship, be strong for your father. Let the love be stronger than before. God Almighty will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. To our provincial pastor, you came here at 12 noon to ensure that you were not trapped in the traffic. And you have been here up to now. Daddy, we thank you. We appreciate you. You are the first person that I called when Wale cried unto me and said, we just lost her. He said, I don't know what to do. Me too, I didn't know what to do, but to call on you, but you strengthened me. And to the provincial pastor, who sent a message to Wally, not knowing what had happened, usual prayer message, and then Wally test her back, and test him, tested him back that this is what has happened. On the spot, you took charge. You drove down to the hospital and you were with us all through even at the morgue and so on and even at the house to strengthen us. The most painful thing that can happen to a pastor is a day like this. Bokola made a promise. He said, Pastor, I will testify. And I told her that her, testi her testimony will win souls to God. But I know, even as she sleeps on, the testimonies you have, you have heard today has taught souls, not only here, but all over the world that are watching us. I pray that God Almighty will bless you in Jesus' name. For being here, in spite of all these challenges that are happening now, to all our friends, foreigners, and um, Nigerians, Africans that are here, I want to say a very big thank you. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Please, let's be upstanding as we say the closing prayer. Watch out unto the Lord. All I have to say is thank you, Lord. What can I say unto God? All I can say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is thank you. 
Father, I thank you for the beautiful soul. I thank you for the generous soul. Generous soul. I thank you for the loving kindness in Bukola. I thank you for a woman that came, saw, and conquered the world with love, with brilliance, with dedication, because I know her passion for work, and I know how much she valued her employer. And I can see today how much the employer still valued her. God will bless her soul in Jesus' name. God will fortify the family in Jesus' name. He will give you beautiful ashes in Jesus' name. And for the right-hand man of Pastor Wale, Pastor Kyle wonderful man. Thank you very much, sir. God will bless you. God will keep you. And God will encourage you. As well as Pastor Bolade as well, that I know. God bless you all in Jesus' name. I want to say a big thank you for God making it possible for us to be here. It is by his grace that we are here, not that we were able to do it by ourselves. And God will take us all home safely in Jesus' name. No matter how difficult the situation is at this moment, God will make a way where there is no way in Jesus' name. Because I trust the word in the Bible, Psalm 1. 1 to 1, verse 8. That the Lord shall preserve thy going out. He will preserve your coming in. From this time and forevermore. So shall it be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father and our God, we thank you once again. We commit tomorrow's service into your hands. Father, take charge in Jesus' name. Every difficulty that may want to arise, Father, Lord God, summon them for us in Jesus' name. At the end of it all, Father, Lord God Almighty, bring back smiles, bring back, bring back joy, bring back celebrations into the Wiley Olafis of family, friends, companies, and loved ones. So shall it be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace and fellowship together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Three glorious hallelujahs unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Go in peace is well with you. Please, can we refrain as much as possible from coming to greet?